Okay. Howdy. I'm not Seth Hopkins. I'm actually Alan Shuptrine from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hats off to the Booth Museum of Western Art for becoming the best museum in America. Congratulations for winning that USA Today prize. So congrats to Seth Hopkins. And thank you to Kent Mullinax and also Sandy Scott for putting all this together today. I'm here to do another No Fear watercolor demo, a 20 minute demo, and we're gonna be working on a big sky sunset. So my wife Bonnie is behind the camera. And also I wanna uh, mention that my National Gallery Manager, Rochelle Haddock, will be on here as well to answer any questions that you might have while I'm painting. I'm also celebrating uh, something wonderful also about my coffee table book, I Come From A Place. We just recently won an Ippy Award. Uh, this is the Independent Publishers Book Award. We won the gold medal for the best nonfiction book in the Southeast region. So happy about that. So celebrations everywhere. Okay, I'm just going to hang my hat right here. And let's get serious. Uh, let's work on a big sky western sunset. So, Bonnie, if you'll come around my shoulder here, and we'll get started. Um, usually, uh, when I start out a watercolor, uh, I do a conceptual drawing on a piece of tracing paper and then transfer that onto my watercolor paper. And you can see here where I've just kind of laid out a, a really, really faint pencil line sketch of, uh, of what I wanted to do. And I just had a quarter lying around, so I just decided, you know, I'll just take a pencil and draw around that and, uh, and put my sun in. Now, you know, in watercolor, there is no white paint. So you have to protect your whites of your paper. Um, so I use mask, and this is the, the kind of mask that I use. It's called Incredible White. You can buy it at just about any big box store. We got it at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is, so this is a latex mask, and if I don't have to do a lot of detail, if I'm just gonna do a round shape, what I'll do is pour a little bit of this in, a, in the lid and you can see where some of it has dried around the edge there. And just take a Q-tip and dip that in the mask and then bring it over and just apply it to the round circle there that's gonna actually become this ball of light, this beautiful white bright sun, just like that. And you need to let that dry for 10 or 15 minutes and then maybe hit it with a hair dryer just to be sure it's dry. And why are you doing this? And I'm doing this to protect the white paper uh, where the bright sun is going to be of the sunset because I don't get to actually apply any paint in watercolor. Now they do have white and gouache, but it doesn't quite look as bright as the paper. I never have liked uh, working with that in conjunction with watercolor, um, but uh, the paper is much brighter. So I'm going to set this aside, and like the magic of television, I've actually prepared something uh, for this little 20-minute demo. I've actually created some mountains in the background and you can see where I've masked off my sun here. I don't know if you can see that in the glare yeah, we can see and the shine, but I've masked off a sun going down behind the horizon, behind the mountains. Can you say hi to now, Pam? Hi Pam, thank you for joining me. Um, you know, the sun, if you think about it, the sun has to set behind something, uh, whether it's the desert, the mountains, or the ocean. And any strong uh, landscape will have some little, even short little lines somewhere in the background that will give the viewer a horizontal. I guess we as humans kind of need to know which way is up. Uh, so in any good strong landscape, there'll be at least a small section somewhere in the background that will give you a, a little, little horizontal line. Okay, so uh, you can also see that I've made myself some very, very faint pencil line notes up in the sky, how I kind of want this very a la prima sky to turn out. I made myself some, some zigzag lines as to the shape of how the clouds will funnel sort of toward the sun, which will also convey to the viewer uh, quite a bit of distance in this painting. And then up here in the top part of the sky, I'll have some very, very large, almost cubist style like clouds. You'll notice that Western clouds uh, almost look like blocks of, of white that are sort of compounded and stacked together, particularly the cumulus clouds, and so I might put a few of those in there at the very top if, if we have enough time. Okay, so time to turn things upside down. I like to work on sunsets this way, and I know that sounds crazy, but and, and your world is turned upside down right now, but this actually is the best way for me to work on it because what I like to do is start with the color right at the very top 
of the mountain. Can you say hi to Christine? Hi, Christy. Thank you for joining. Christine. Hey, Christine. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to take some clean water. And uh, I have various different colors out here on my plate. I use a 10-inch white dinner plate. They're inexpensive, and I can pick them up at, you know, uh, thrift stores and whatnot for maybe 50 cents. That's great. I have a lot of these. What type of brush are you using? Uh, this is a cat's tongue brush. Very old. You can see that all the enamel has worn off of the handle because I sometimes leave it in my water jar, which I shouldn't do. Uh, this is burnt sienna. Then I have ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. I have permanent rose, permanent alizarin crimson, permanent orange. I have um, permanent orange is like a semi-opaque color. I have yellow ochre, which is also a semi-opaque color. And then I have aurelian yellow, which kind of has some green in it. And a lot of people that paint sunsets, they worry about their sky turning green, particularly when they transfer from blue to yellow. But if you look carefully, actually, there's a lot of green sometimes in sunsets. So I never really worry about that. But there are a lot of artists that will use different yellows, like transparent yellow and, and others that they won't turn too much green. All right, so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this painting right here at the top of the mountain. But again, remember, I'm working upside down just for a few colors until the, I get the fade of what I want for my sunset. So I'm going to wet all of this so that I can work a la prima. And right up into the actual distant mountain, I'm going to let some water overlap into that. And a good watercolor paper will not reverse out of that. It won't bloom. So if you're getting blooming, you might have a, a watercolor paper that's very unforgiving. So you can do water over the mask. Uh-huh. So go back in here and dip the brush in water again. And what I'm looking for, I'm going to wait on this paper to just, yeah, you can paint the water right over the mask. And that's the whole purpose of the mask is to be able to have, um, is to be able to have a, uh, a situation where you don't have to really worry about it. You know that that mask is going to protect the whites. And so this is very, very wet at this point, And my water's a little bit dirty from laying in those mountains, but it's okay. I'm going to go back in and just pull a little bit of this water off of the surface because I have it too wet. Kind of want that sort of satin effect and that's that magic moment that we as watercolorists call the magic moment. Uh, it is that satin effect where you will actually get the most uptake of pigment into the paper. Now I'm going to take my wet brush and go over here and the very first color that I want to lay against the horizon line is this very very loud um, pink, and this is a uh, permanent rose, and I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of alizarin crimson with it, and I'm also going to put just a tiny little bit of permanent orange with it. Boy, that permanent orange is really strong. There we go. And while this is wet, I'm going to go ahead and lay this color in right at the mountainside. Not much, just a little thin strip of this, especially around the sun. So this is going to go right here at the base of the sun and fade into the mountain and a little bit right here in this valley and I'm going to fade it back out into a tiny little bit and I know it's kind of hard for you to see what's going on because you're looking at this upside down but trust me when I flip this back over you're going to love it. Now I'm going to quickly go get some pure orange and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of yellow ochre that I have on the palette and now this is going to be an even warmer orange that's going to blend into that See what I'm doing there? This is a nice graduation of really, really hot pink going all the way into very, very bright real in yellow, which is here. So I'm now going to mix that into my mixture. And usually right above the sun, there is a very, very loud amount of yellow right there. And now I'm almost going to get just pure real in at this point and bring it on up into this. Now at some point I have to, before I get to the top of the page, which is the bottom of the page for you guys, I have to somehow get into the cobalt blue area because I do want cobalt. So I'm gonna go get some cobalt blue at this point, but with a lot of water. And this is usually where you'll get a little bit of a green effect in the sky, but it's okay. I'm gonna let this field of blue sort of collide with the yellow and then as I get on up here and get super, super dark, I'm gonna get a lot more of the cobalt blue. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of burnt sienna to dirty it up. 
And from this point on, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm going to now paint this super, super dark up in the sky. As I go up here with this much, much darker color, I'm also going to reverse out a few clouds. I'll show you what I mean by that. I have over here on the, on the easel, I have prepared some sort of crumpled up pieces of, of uh, paper towel. And those are key because what I intend to do with those, as I flip this back around, you'll, you'll be able to enjoy that. What I intend to do with these is take some paper towel and actually up here at the very top of this, I'm going to block off and kind of cube cube like shapes some clouds at the very top which will make more sense later rochelle's explaining it too so these will be clouds up here at the very top that will be coming through and um, somebody asked me in one of my sunset workshops one time he said to him, how do you get those beautiful rays of light jumping out of the sun and so forth well, i'm going to show you how to do that here in just a second as soon as i can I talk to him while you're painting? Absolutely. Alan, do you sell these pieces? I do sell these, actually. If you're interested in any of my work, uh, you can always contact me on Facebook, find my account on Facebook, and message me there. Or if you want to um, write this uh, email down, you can always email the gallery at shuptrons.com if you can remember how to spell my name, of course. Um, that's S H U P T R I N E. Um, okay, so. That's beautiful. At this particular point, we need to um, we need to dry this because it's the clouds that go in front of all of this that's really going to make a difference. Okay. So I'm just going to before I actually dry it though, I do want to blot out some super super distant clouds out here that might be out here on the horizon. And a lot of times you'll notice if you're trying to um, if you're trying to create distance in a painting, you'll notice that the clouds sort of fan away from the viewer left and right, particularly toward the sun. So you can bring in these distant clouds like this, much, much smaller on the horizon line. They would be much smaller. And then of course, right up here at the very top of your field of view, they'd be quite large. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a hair dryer. So I wish we had some music for you guys to listen to, but give me about three minutes uh, at the very most. Okay, that's not fully dry, but it's fully dry enough for us and what we're going to be doing next. Okay, the next thing I want to do is bring in some dark clouds in the front of this. These visible clouds uh, down here will only be visible through the tops of those. And, you know, if the sun is down here at the horizon, the belly of these clouds will be lit up with some bright orange and and uh, and yellow and so forth, and the tops of these clouds will have a shadow on the top of them. Whereas if it's a sunrise, you know, usually uh, the cloud is in reverse. So... You say hi to Lawson? Hey Lawson, thanks for joining us. Okay, so what I wanna do now is uh, I'm gonna take, take my water and I'm gonna pull a little bit of this yellow out of here and make some room for some beautiful purples. So uh, taking the same cat, cat's tongue brush, I'm gonna go up and get some cobalt blue and get some permanent rose and a really, really beautiful and daring bright purple. But I'm gonna subdue that down with just a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine blue just to get the sort of violet that I'm looking for. There we go. Now, usually right here uh, at the sun, and sometimes blocking the sun, we will actually do that. But there's usually some beautiful purple clouds that come into effect here because at, cer at some certain point, the sun is silhouetted out. So what we're gonna do now is take a, a misting bottle, and I have one here. I bought this one on Amazon. It's a large capacity one, so I love it. And uh, I'm going to lightly mist 
this paper right here so, so that my purples can swim around. I'm gonna take this deep, deep purple color, and when I first lay it on, this is gonna be my initial purple, and then as I get further on up into this, I'm going to be darker, and as I get further toward the sun, but consider this sort of my mid-range purples that I'm gonna put in, but I'm gonna bring a, a purple sky in that's gonna look something like this, and it's gonna fade off left and right of the viewer. So I have some purple up here at the top. Mm. And uh, this is a fun part because, you know, you really can't mess this up. But I kind of want this purple to sort of fade to almost a black purple at the very, very top. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable my clouds up here that are peeking through occasionally to have a little bit more believability. So this purple up here at the very, very top needs to be super, super black, almost like we're creating a halo. And I want those edges to swim. So I'm going to add a little bit of water there and let's just bring these little tendrils out where did you see the sunset well i did see a sunset last night that sort of reminded me of this but this one i'm creating completely out of my imagination uh, i don't have a reference photo on this one so i honestly don't know where we're going with this other than the fact that i know that i need to bring some really dark purple in over here on this side and in the same sort of fashion i want the viewer to feel like this is sort of going off in both directions. So I'll have a little bit more purple over here on this side. And soften that a little bit. There we go. Soften those edges. How are we doing time-wise? I wonder whether or not great. I'm going to have enough time. Okay, good. Just take now, the belly of some of these clouds that are peeking through, they would have that beautiful, beautiful yellow color. So I'm going to go back over to the palette and change brushes to a smaller brush. And I kind of want to give those clouds just a little bit of warmth from the sun. So while this is still wet, right here particularly, I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow in here to warm up the bottom of that cloud and let it just sort of fade, fade into white. That's a good, good place right there. Show a little bit of warmth on the bottom side of those clouds, especially where it might be peeking through in a few places here and there, because it won't be pure white. It may, may be pure white near the top of the cloud, but um, before you get to the shadow. But yeah, here might be a nice place where you have some strong yellow coming through. So let me show you what that looks like from your vantage point. So, and then I'll fade this up here at the top, and then at the very top of that cloud, I'll actually put a shadow, just like a little hat on the top of that cloud, and then fade that into the actual white itself. See that? That makes it a lot more believable mm. that the light is coming from underneath. Now, let's get this dry again, but before we do, I'm going to put just a couple of more clouds over here. This time, sort of a pinkish-reddish cloud coming in here from the right. And it's maybe catching some of the mid-tones left over from the sunset. So I'll just give that a quick mist and soften the edges of that. This is a number six Kalinsky Sable brush that I'm using for this technique here. Okay, now, at this particular point, I need to get this dry again. So, but before I do, I don't want to miss my opportunity to get plenty of warmth on the bottom of these little tips of clouds that are popping through. So, let me just paint just a little bit of yellow there. Paint a little bit of yellow there on that. A little bit more there. There we go. Now that looks good. All right, so quickly with the hair dryer again. Okay. okay, you got five minutes. Got five minutes. Most of this is dry around the sun, so I can go ahead and go in and remove that area. And um, you can, you know, for something this small, you can just simply use your finger, you know, to actually remove the mask 
if you wanted to use a pickup square, you could, but you can see now how I've got a super, super bright ball. Will you show them the pickup square though? Of light. Do you have one? Um, yeah, I have one that's over there. I'll, I'll hold okay. the camera where we can go get it. Um, so I have this really, really nice bright ball of light. See that? And that's the brightness of the paper only. You see how much brighter that would be actually than any kind of paint that you could put there. This is a small piece of pickup square and it's made out of crepe. And you know, in order to remove any mask with this, you just simply lightly rub it. But what you don't want to do is get a huge tidal wave of this going all at once because then you can pull up the delicate, delicate skin of the, uh, of the paper. And then once you do that, as you know, uh, that area will accept more pigment than other places. Now, what I like to do is, is I like to go around the edges of the sun with dry brush technique and actually flow this into the surrounding color that I have. What paintbrush is that? This is a number eight Rosemary and Company Kalinsky Sable. It's really old though. I've sort of worn the, the tip off of it, which is just fine because I kind of want to use it for dry brush only, but just going in here and getting pure Arelian yellow, uh, hardly ever, ever um, choose a color just by itself. I usually mix my colors and I don't recommend using a color by itself ever straight out of the tube, but this is one of those exceptions. Now, I, I put on a, a latex glove because I don't want to touch the paint, but what I like to do at this particular point is take the paint and squeeze. Now you can you notice that I, I picked up a lot of pigment, hardly any water, and I just want to squeeze most of the pigment out of that brush and kind of form a chisel point. And then I'm going to go in and right where the edge of the of the sun is, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just putting a halo of yellow around that. And what I'm gonna do is work that yellow over and into my actual color around there because, and if you notice, if you notice the sun, the sun is sometimes not even a perfectly round ball showing, but you might actually have something in front of that. So I'm just gonna put like a little halo of yellow here and I'm gonna work that same color out, dry brushing it out into my actual surrounding area. Jonathan thinks it's beautiful. Say thank hey, you. Hey, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for tuning in. I really enjoy doing these and you know, um, I hope everybody is surviving at home well with this uh, quarantining we're all having to do. I know it's, uh, a lot on us um, and I know we've had a lot of loved ones pass away in this horrible pandemic but um, you know as the saying goes we're in this together I know you've heard that a million times but just keep hanging in there let's just keep fighting and we'll get there but you see how now I'm going back and getting some pure orange and working that in as well and I'm dry brushing it in over my critical area and this is really where I want the the viewer to focus. Obviously, when you look at a sunset, you're looking toward the sun. You're looking at what kind of dynamics the sun is creating on the horizon. And then when you look at a portrait, you typically look at the highlight of the white of a person's nose. And painters actually use white to control their viewer. Um, so as you can see, I'm just dry brushing this in and scuffing it in over the color and then bringing it in over my pencil edge as well on the sun. How are we doing for time? Well, that's beautiful. I How are we want... doing time-wise? Uh, I think we've got a couple minutes. Okay, now at this particular point, this is where I want you guys to really focus because this is where you can get a lot of drama. Go in and get some very, very black purple. Um, you know, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of permanent rose and I like to I like to do this uh, when my when my paper is slightly damp, so I'm just going to barely miss this, and I'm going to now take this and pretend that there is a very very dark cloud that goes over the top of the sun. It usually is and blocks out some of the sun. It's really interesting how that works, but and don't get too carried away with it. You can do too much of it and actually not have any sun left over, but Sometimes there's a cloud that's shaped like this, which adds even more drama wow. to a sunset. So um, 
Notice how the edges on this are much harder than anywhere else. So I'll probably let that dry, then come back in and do another pass over the top of it because it's very hard to get this dark enough over all this other brilliant color We're on the first post pass. We're going to finished painting, right? Yeah, I'll try to uh, post this finished painting after I'm finished with it, you know, sure. uh, at some point. But um, uh, there you go. That's, uh, show that's it again, just a Alan. little short demo, but I'll turn it around and show it to you. Um, Ta -da. So this is a big sky western sunset. And again, that's beautiful. Uh, thank you guys so much for letting me come in and do this demo. Um, if you ever want to take lessons from me, all you have to do is just contact me. I uh, give uh, both private and group lessons. Thank and, you to the uh, booth. Thank you, Booth Museum of Western Art. Um, I can't wait to come down and see you guys again when everything is it's safe to travel and, and whatnot. But everybody take care. And again, thanks very much.